This is Tom, the president of a marketing agency that seemed to be doing well. For the sake of anonymity, let's call the agency Buzzworthy. Now, on the surface, it was smooth sailing. After all, Buzzworthy had catapulted their client count from zilch to 20 in just two years. But something was up. Growth had hit a perplexing plateau. Tom had a hard time scaling the business. The agency did not have the capacity to bring on more clients. Tom and his team were overworked. In a bid to turn things around, Tom and his partner called in a business consultant. After observing Buzzworthy at work, the consultant identified three red flags. The consultant's first insight was that Tom and his team were not optimizing their time. You see, in order for things to run smoothly, the team was wearing many hats. This created constant schedule changes and derailed their ability to do any deep, uninterrupted work. Advice for other agency owners, especially if you are a solo owner, I think it can be very difficult working in an agency with its own unique challenges and without support at a high level from co-owners or partners, it can be very, very difficult. So the advice that I would give would be to go and seek out a mentor or a coach from someone in agency land that has done it and been there um, and succeeded that can help work with you to set goals, look at strategy and keep you accountable. And on the macro level, remember that your reputation precedes you. If you want to be an industry leader, people need to see you manage and build your agency right. Buzzworthy had grown quickly. The team was facing constant meetings and putting out never ending fires. Also, as the owner, Tom was the go to guy for most issues. He had become a bottleneck. In the initial years, probably just more of the you don't know what you don't know kind of thing. Just doing it all yourself. A thriving marketing agency is like a well-oiled machine. And the secret sauce lies in the extraordinary talent within it. You see, when you've got a team of absolute rock stars, there's no limit on how high you can soar. That's where the real magic happens. One of the turning points for online marketing to become a established agency from a startup is when we started creating a leadership team. As you grow, you can't do everything yourself. You have to remove things from your plate and you've got to and you've got to trust other people to be able to handle things for you and your business. So for me the biggest turning point was putting in place that leadership team, putting in directors over the various departments and allowing them to run their departments and manage their team, manage their people, manage their workloads without me having to have my finger on it all the time. So Putting the leadership team in place was a big thing for us. A good leadership team implements standard operating procedures, or SOPs, at an agency. These SOPs are like the backbone of efficiency and consistency. From client onboarding to campaign execution, SOPs provide a step-by-step -step guide that streamlines operations and eliminates guesswork. Everybody here can do almost every job. So if I'm gone, I'm able to, you know, put the office manager in charge and say, you know, take care of my task for this day. And so I feel like cross-training, which we, we had kind of got ourselves boxed in our own silos for a while. Cross-training has really given me the ability to step away if I need to. Once processes are in place, next come KPIs. When you set clear goals and track measurable metrics, you're giving your team a roadmap to greatness. Delegation becomes a breeze and accountability it becomes second nature. KPIs create a culture of ownership, driving everyone to deliver their best. You know, in the beginning, we didn't establish KPIs that tie into employees' performance reutilization. And we were guessing a lot of times on how effective an employee was. So, so as an example for an SEO agency, one of the things that we deal with is, is a heavy amount, a heavy amount of volume in terms of content publishing. So we have dedicated content publishing roles. And what we did is we established as a leading indicator at KPI, how many articles did they publish per week? And it's predictive, right? As a leading indicator on how many articles we're gonna get published for the month, it helps us track their utilization. It also helps us compare one employee to the other to see if an individual needs more training. And it, it helps us establish those A players and understand when an employee is slacking and, and not getting the job done. And we can make those objective decisions to whether to hire, fire, train, whatever those may be. And in the beginning, we just didn't establish KPIs well enough. Back to our agency Buzzworthy, which the consultant found was selling time rather than value and results. This creates a sustainability issue. Time is a valuable and costly commodity. The less time we spend on creating and generating reports means more time we can invest into the client's marketing campaigns. As long as a client keeps seeing the value in ROI, they're a client for life. The bottom line is that your client wants value, 
not your time. When you sell value, you have more flexibility in managing the time to provide that value. One of the key elements with that is our reporting engine using agency analytics as a base so that our clients can see their website performance, their campaign performance at any time. But then we're also using it to run monthly video, five, six minute monthly video reports housed in a custom dashboard. Um, our clients love it, it keeps them engaged and it helps us show the value very clearly and in an easy to understand manner. Um, so that we're always highlighting value, value, value. Many agencies compare with their competitors to set a price, sometimes creating a race to the bottom. Others take a more value-based approach. First, they'll look at value. In other words, how unique their product or service is. They then account for the risk of overshooting an effort, their expected margins, and their expected costs to create a fair price. The consultant's third finding was that Buzzworthy was trying to be everyone to everybody. In other words, by having a very wide range of services but few specialized skills, there was not much differentiating Buzzworthy from the competition. It's something that evolves over time. I think, you know, everyone is unique uh, and brings their own unique skills to this, uh, to this space. But I think leaning into your specialization, really choosing, picking and, and working in a niche and working on your own company culture and seeing how your services evolve over time by really, really learning how your niche works, what unique problems they have and how you can solve them. Um, then your value proposition will evolve over time through that. And it's something you can keep coming back to and keep improving on. Once you have a niche, you start to develop specialized products and services. It also opens up new markets. It is a lot easier to sell services when you pick a niche. You need to have really tailored content solutions for your clients because you need to know who you're speaking to. We realized we needed to make industry specific content. True masters of a craft are hard to come by. And so by becoming that master, the agency creates demand for their services. We really needed to reposition who we were and what we offered. And coming out of that shop of our conference, I said to Duncan, we're not a digital marketing agency. We are gonna position ourselves as an e-commerce specialist team. We are going to really focus on Shopify and start to show expertise just in that niche and develop a really, really solid understanding of how to market for e-commerce and how to develop for e-commerce. And the benefits of narrowing down to a niche is driven home by this SEO agency that helps their customers in the mental health industry niche down. I love what we do at my SEO business. You know, we take these counseling practices that don't know where the next client is coming from and these therapists that sometimes are accepting clients that they really shouldn't be working with. They don't love working with them. It's not their area of expertise, but they're so scared of when the next call is going to come. And we come in and we help them and we help them niche down and really um, and really show up for the right keywords, not just any keywords in the mental health field, but the right ones. And then they start getting more calls. They grow their business. They grow in their confidence. They are doing better clinical work and better helping their clients and their families are better taken care of. Experts in the niche are sought after. And once you land a few clients, your name will naturally get tossed around your target industry. This word of mouth advertising gets you leads in a way that doesn't cost much money or time. Past client referrals is huge. I'm always amazed and honored how many of our past clients refer other practice owners to us. The first step to lifting off the plateau is by dropping the weights that are keeping you down. And here's the second. Do client reporting smarter, not harder. Sign up for a free trial of agency analytics. The link is down in the description below. If you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and hit that bell notification button to stay updated with our future videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.